Hello and welcome to the PCM Tech Help Show, and you are watching PCM Tech Talk Live. That's right, PCM Tech Talk Live, where we talk everything live about tech. It's what we do here. We enjoy talking tech live. It's a very exciting thing for us because we get our nerd on. And it's kind of like a real goofy way of saying nerd, geek, awesomeness. That's what we do here at the Tech Talk Live show. PCM Tech Talk Live is live where uh, we talk everything hang on a live. Second, hang on a second. I just accidentally about tech. in my audio. It's what... Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I can actually hear my audio in here now. That way I can tell if you guys are hearing an echo. Hey, finally, you know, finally got something or getting organized here, some kind of structure to the show. And first, we're going to open up the show, of course, with the news, what's going on in the news today. Some very interesting news ranging from Blackberry all the way to Illuminescent Paint. How awesome is that? Very exciting. I also want to talk about tech internships because I actually am going to propose an internship for those of you who like to follow the show because to be honest with you, I can't do it all on my own and I can't afford to pay anybody because the show, quite frankly, isn't making enough money to pay anybody yet. But an internship does have the future potential to pay some money. But we'll see how you do and how it goes. But you have to just submit your application to me. And I'll elaborate on that in a little bit later. But before we get into that, let's talk about what's going on in the news. First of all, there's something called electroluminescent paint. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but science fiction is no longer science fiction. We are officially in the coolest part of the tech era. And everything that was in all the sci-fi movies we watched growing up are coming to fruition. Everything from bendable OLED screens. Yes, we're going to get those sweet flat screen see-through awesome tablets that you see in all those awesome science fiction movies all the way to this idea that I never would have actually thought would exist. I never would have even thought of this idea. Apparently, a company developed a paint that you can paint onto the walls and apply a electric, an electrical current to and it will give off a fluorescent light in that color. So this is actually capable with a very small current to illuminate a room in its entirety, an entire room, without any light bulbs, without any of this, you know, the traditional way of lighting a room. It actually is done through paint. So, of course, it's, it's in its, you know, its infant stages, you know, you got to have, it might kill you if you breathe it in, you know, you can't paint it when you're around children, minors, teenagers, adults, living creatures, or any of that, but that's all circumstantial, you know, because we're going to get there. And this is an awesome piece of technology. And, and I got no pictures here. I just like pointing at the paper because you guys are wondering, what is he pointing at? This is just the article I'm pointing at. But if you look up electroluminescent paint, you will find all kinds of really cool things going on in that industry right now. And I think this is a really cool thing that talks about the future of, are we in finally Minority Report? Are we finally there? Steven Spielberg did some research in advance for this movie on purpose because this technology was all feasible in that movie not really a stellar 100 percent amazing movie but it's actually kind of weird how fast we've gotten to that point almost so i want to know your thoughts on the electroluminescent paint would you paint your walls with this paint and then rather than flipping on a light switch and having lights come on your wall lights up or a wall or i thought about this earlier what about ceiling tiles in your basement you have no recessed lighting none of that stuff you just click on a light and your whole Room gets illuminated from the walls. Very exciting, man. I'm telling you, every time we talk about this, this is what I call a future tech article. Of course, it's, like I said, in its infant stages, but it's just really, it's exciting to talk about stuff like this because I read this article and I was like, yes, I need that. Take my money. Just take it, please. I want four of them. Four buckets. I'll paint myself. I'll walk around all glowy. That would be a great live broadcast. I'm telling you guys. Very cool story. It's one of my one of my favorite ones. I really liked it, actually. I like the idea of being able to paint something and, and, and just flip up a light switch and have that object illuminate whatever color I painted it. Paintable lights. Man. Man. That's crazy. That's, that's like science fiction stuff there. In other news, Zynga.com makes Facebook Connect optional. Okay? Zynga, as you guys may or may not know, makes a series of Facebook games... Many of them very popular, such as Zynga Poker, Zynga Slots. Lots of them very popular. A very profitable company, to be honest with you. They've gone through some 
rough times previously, but they did recently make a big drastic change to their website, their gaming website, and it'll actually make it so you actually go in and log into their service instead of through Facebook. They've historically always required that you use your Facebook profile to log in, but they're starting to actually create their own platform. Now, I remember a couple months ago, Zynga also went out and got licensing for gambling. So I'm really kind of curious to see what their future business model is for Zynga, because I think they make really solid games. Zynga Poker especially is a lot of fun. Uh, Zynga Slots also a lot of fun. But uh, their games are strangely addicting, incredibly fun for, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be that fun, but they are. Uh, visually, I always liked their graphics. They always did a really good job with the graphics compared to the competitors. And to be honest with you, I I'm kind of excited to see what they're gonna do with their own solo platform. I don't like social games, for the most part. I don't like them when they're integrated into social media and you have to spam all your buddies just to advance. That frustrates the heck out of me. Those games always drive me crazy. And I don't think it's just me. I see people all the time saying, how do I block app requests? And you can do it, by the way. There's a little X in the top right-hand corner. And you can click that little X on your Facebook feed. And you can click block feed, block this app. And you can actually block every message from that app. You're welcome. I know, it's, it's a rough, it's a very rough thing. I just wish you could just block them all by default. Not that easy. Not that easy. They want you to play these games, okay? And some of them are really fun, but there's just so many of them. Then it drives us crazy. But I'd like to see what Zynga does with this because it is a social gaming company. They rely heavily on getting engagement. Their revenue model is essentially displaying ads in the game. But hey, we can't really complain about that because we are getting the game for free. So we're being entertained in some way. So I don't mind that so much. That doesn't bother me. They also have in-game money so you can buy things to it, buy new items and stuff like that. I honestly never thought that revenue model would succeed. But now I found myself actually doing it with some games, Diablo 3, and uh, I'm actually very tempted to do things like that. It, it, it's just a matter of time, you know? You just don't have a lot of time to play these games in advance when you get older. When you get old and crotchety like me, you just don't have the time to advance beyond your years. So Zynga.com, check that out. They've got a new login system there. If you like their games, see what other games they got there. It's not just limited to Facebook. They're an independent company now. I thought I might give them a little push because I like that whole, we're going and doing our own thing, Facebook. We don't need you. Well, we do need you, but we don't need you anymore. So I thought that was kind of a cool little story. Apparently, the Google executive chairman, get this, the Google executive chairman uses a BlackBerry. I thought this was hilarious. I, I read this article today and I had to actually read it twice. I did a double take. Sorry, I'm distracted over here. I was looking for the cover page. I don't see it here. The Google chairman, what's his name? Uh, Eric Schmidt. Yes, you're out there, Eric. We're talking about you. Eric Schmidt uses a BlackBerry. He was at a, a convention here in North Korea, apparently, and uh, they spotted him clicking away on his little BlackBerry. And it's the, it's the BlackBerry Bold type. Uh, it actually does, does say the exact model here. I don't know which one. It's the one with the physical keyboard. And his exact reason was for the keyboard. Huh. Imagine that. So Eric Schmidt, a uh, Google executive, decided that um, he prefers a physical keyboard. Now, this has actually raises in a very interesting topic of discussion for you guys especially. Do you, in fact, use the keyboard? I'm looking at your chat right now. By the way, the chat goes on right here at the show, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash live. It's going on right now live as we speak, and I get to see what you guys are saying in the chat room. Do you prefer the physical keyboard or do you prefer the touchscreen keyboard? I went through quite a few phones in my day. And uh, to be honest with you, I've always personally preferred the touch screen. Uh, it, but that, that initial transition, I was very pessimistic. That initial, like, should I try it? No, I shouldn't try it. Should I try it? No, should I try it? Should I try it? No. And I finally did. I finally, finally caved. I tried it with my first, uh, which one was it? The HTC Hero by Sprint. And to be honest with you, I fell in love with it almost immediately. It was pretty awesome. Craftkick says physical is easier. Viper also says physical is easier. Uh, did you find the transition easier once you actually kind of finally started using it? Um, but, because uh, I, I, I did, I did at first. I didn't like it at first, but actually I, I prefer the digital keyboard now myself. I do, I like it a lot. I think it's kind of interesting that the Google executive, all them Android phones, that's hilarious. That's just, it's just funny news. It's, it's, it's so entertaining to see stuff like that. 
So Craftkick says too small for the hero, and uh, Viper says I've used I've used to, used to have physical as well. See that's see that's very interesting because uh, we all still talk about the physical like like in past tense the physical keyboard, but uh, we still miss it in a lot of ways, and I do too. There's something about touching something tangible that just really helps. Now the chart of the day: Apple dominates in consumer cloud services. This is from a report by Strategy Analytics 2012 third quarter consumer metric survey via Engadget. Uh, and apparently, U.S. usage of major cloud media services, so in other words, the companies that are making the most money on usage, well, not making the most money, but getting the most users to use cloud services like iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, iTunes is winning by an astounding number, staggering numbers. They are actually 27% of the market, followed by Dropbox, who has 17% of the market, followed by Amazon Cloud Drive, and then followed even further behind by Google Drive. And this is interesting. The biggest complaint here was that people don't really fully understand the cloud yet. The cloud isn't that complicated, but it's true. It sounds scary because it's like in the cloud. It's, people don't like the idea of their data floating. And it's almost like cloud might not have been the best word to choose and market this idea with. Like, hmm, let's call it something that sounds completely and ridiculously insecure. But it does sound cool. The cloud. The cloud is very secure depending on the cloud you decide to use, but it's also very cost effective. I've talked about this previously in my videos. I use the Google Cloud service along with all of my actual devices and I'm able to actually put all of my files on my computer in a drive much like any of your other folders in a, basically in a folder and that synchronizes all my documents onto the cloud automatically and it, it's just it's magical I have a PC app for Google Cloud for Google Drive I'm sorry and then I have an iPhone app for Google Drive and then I have another PC app for Google Drive at my work I drop one file on one computer in there, and it's on all of my devices. That's essentially how it works. It's very straightforward, not that complicated. Google Drive, I think you can get 200 gigs of it for, how much is it, $10 a month, $20 a month maybe. And of course you have iTunes. You get the first five gigs free. Google Drive, you get the first five gigs free. I think it's the same with uh, Dropbox. But uh, these are very awesome services. You guys should really look into Google Drive. I don't know. Is anybody in my chat room currently using a drive service? Uh, I'm very curious if anybody's actually done it because I use Google Drive, but it did take me a while to finally figure out how it all worked together and decide on a solution. Dropbox has probably done the best drop job of streamlining this, and it's probably, from what I understand, one of the most popular outside of iTunes. Looks like it's the second most popular, and it's for that reason. It's just like a drag and drop folder, and you can actually you know, play around with it. Tom Prokes in the chat room says, the cloud? No comment. Which is funny. Tom Prokes is our security guy. Um, I like to call him our security guy because I think if anybody showed up and started suggesting things that aren't secure, he would actually freak out on them. <laughs> so he's a, he's a good guy. And these guys are the community, by the way. PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community. We have an awesome community over there of a lot of very fun people. And uh, it's awesome because they're all sitting here talking while we're doing the live chat. And anybody can join. You know, all the way back from you being tech savvy to being a complete numbskull newbie. Noob sauce. That's what we're all about here. Uh, it looks like uh, Beat Hunter uses SkyDrive, which is Microsoft's. I think SkyDrive gives you like 10 gigs for free. Uh, Rusty Evans says, I got it on mine. Looks like he's probably got Google Drive. Um, any other good alternatives for Dropbox and Google Drive, asks Holy Boy. It looks like we've got iTunes Cloud, the iCloud. Of course, you can buy additional storage for your iCloud. That's the number one right now. And then you've got Amazon Cloud Drive. Our company actually uses Amazon Cloud Drive to do all of our offsite storage for data backups. So, oh, 25 gigabytes from uh, SkyDrive, the chat room. See, what would I do without these guys? What do I do without these guys? You get 25 gigabytes free from Microsoft SkyDrive right out of the box. That's them trying to break into the market. So take advantage of it while you can. They're trying to get people really involved in that. Now, I did have issues when I installed my cloud, Google Drive, and Dropbox together. I had driver issues. So that's something to be wary of. Now, there's a big virus that got launched in Korea called the Wiper. Now, this, this virus actually is, is quite extensive, but I, I was reading up on it because I thought it was kind of fascinating. What these hackers are capable of doing, 
always fascinates me. And this particular virus actually was able to infect through a Trojan, and uh, the Trojan then went out and scanned all the computers connected to the internal network. It then installed itself onto the main computer that originally had it, and then distributed delete signals to all the computers on the network of the master boot record of those computers. Now, for those of you who don't know what a master boot record is, it's essentially your master boot record. What this means is, is when you turn on your computer, it retains all of the information necessary to launch your system. If this, for any reason, becomes corrupted or damaged, your computer no longer boots. But the good thing is, is they were so nice as to after delete your master boot record, they decided to automatically restart your computer. So most, com most computers just turn themselves off and never turn back on again. So it's quite amazing what these people are capable of doing. I wanted to go through here. This article is actually from Ars Technica, and it's actually a great article. Uh, let me see who wrote it, because I kind of want to give them credit. Uh, it's just because they, they did such a good job. It's so thorough. Uh, I'll post it at the community as well. It's, uh, like they didn't put their name on here, but it's at Ars Technica. The title of it's Your Hard Drive Will Self-Destruct at 2 p.m. Inside the South Korean Cyber Attack. And they did like a full-fledged report here, and it's very, very entertaining read because you kind of learn a lot about how it was done. And uh, it was actually able to infect. I know you Linux guys are going to jump all over this. Listen to this. The script in the dropper looks specifically for mRemote, on open source remote connection manager for Windows to keep profiles that keeps profiles from saved connections in an XML file and searches for configurations for SSH connections to Linux machines with root privileges. So it was also able to wipe out Linux machines on the network. And then they said this virus really is it's it's quite simple. I think people call that elegant in the industry. An elegant design. Why overcomplicate things? If they work, they work, right? So I don't know whether to pat these guys on the back or say, bad terrorists. Bad terrorists. I think we can call you terrorists. Maybe you're just having fun with it. This is actually some good news from Apple. They add two-factor authentication to the Apple ID. Okay, what the two-factor authentication is, essentially, it requires you to have a physical device on you to be able to log into your Apple account. Why do I like services like this? Because they're extremely secure. If you try to log into your device or into anything, or it log into your uh, Apple service on here with the two-step authenticator, as soon as you enter your password, it's going to send you a text message. That text message will contain a security code, and you can enter the security code in there to continue. And then you can actually verify that this machine's an official machine for your network. I'm a very big fan of this, and it's very easy to get to it. If you sign into your Apple ID at your Apple website, you can just go to Passwords and Security and enable two-step verification. So for those of you who are using Apple products and uh, use them on a lot of different devices, and you have some very sensitive or somewhat sensitive information, I recommend enabling that two-step verification. I think it's one of the best ways to secure your content. And plus, another great thing is if somebody tries to break into your account, you're going to get the neat a text. With a, with a verification code, and you're going to be like, wait a minute, somebody knows my password. But they still won't be able to get in. So you at least have a heads notice. At the very least, that's what's worth it. I use the two-step verification for Google's profiles. So if anybody tries to log into my YouTube account, guesses my password, they still have to have their my phone on them in order to get access. I feel like I'm a security agent when I do that, too. I'm like, Ch -ch 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 -ch, password entered. Please wait for verification code. And then all of a sudden my phone beeps and I've got a verification code within seconds. I feel like James freaking Bond when that happens. It's awesome. It's the best feeling in the world. So if at the very least, to feel like James Bond, enable two-step verification, you will love it. Has anybody here in the chat room enabled two-step verification? Does it drive you crazy? Do you enjoy it? Or you're like, nah, I don't need that security crap. I don't need any of that. Looks like these guys are talking about who knows what in the chat room. All kinds of crazy stuff going on over there. So it looks like Craftix used it for a little while now. So yeah, these guys are these guys are on it. They're on it. That's why they're part of my community. Best people on the internet. Last article, and then we will move on to the topic of the night. BlackBerry hoping long-awaited U.S. launch pays off. The Z10, the Z10. Who's paying attention to the news? BlackBerry is finally going to break into the market with a phone. By the way, they, they make phones. Did you know this? Apparently, 
BlackBerry makes phones. And the CEO, like we talked about yesterday, the CEO apparently thinks Apple's dated. So these guys are so awesome at making phones that we didn't even know they made them. So they're going to be releasing the Z10 coming up, and they've already released it, released it in 25 different countries. And uh, the number of apps available has grown to 100,000, up from 70,000. Now, this includes, actually, apps that are basically uh, emulated from the Android store. So can we count those? I don't know if we can count those. Not a very impressive number, to be honest with you. I think Apple last count broke a billion. I don't even know. Was it a million, a 10 million? It was something insane. Uh, same with Android. They're way up there. They're way up there. But uh, Blackberry's finally... Is it too little too late for Blackberry, guys? Come on. Who's going to go Who's gonna go buy a Blackberry? Who's going to go look at the Z10? Especially with the announcement, of the announcement of the Samsung Galaxy S4, which, by the way, 1080p screen. I saw some videos of it on the internet. It's gorgeous. I mean, I don't use words like gorgeous typically, but this screen is amazing. Like, I had to turn my resolution up just to kind of get an idea of how amazing the resolution was on there. But but really, BlackBerry, I don't know. It might be too late for BlackBerry. They'll hit a niche market, but will that be able to sustain them as a cell phone company? That's the question. I don't know about that. So let's go ahead and move on to the main story of tonight. Internships. Internet internships. Now, the reason I talked about tech internships basically was because I am actually going to be announcing officially tonight that I am going to be in need of an intern. I was sitting down yesterday thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? I don't know how to do – well, no, no, no. But scratch that. I don't have the time to do a lot of things that need to be done. So I'm going to be looking for an intern who's interested in content management. Now, WordPress is a content management system, so I'd appreciate it if you had some experience with WordPress – but since I'm not paying you, because it's an unpaid intern gig, I will probably take any application that gets sent to me. Any application, I need your name, a little bit of background about yourself, if you've joined the community, how long you've been watching the show, and whether you think you'll be able to free five to ten hours, maybe a week, for this position. And what I'll return, in, my, in your favors, you'll be working directly for me on this gig, and I will show you how to do major content management in the actual distribution on a WordPress site. And hopefully, if things go well, I'll give you some additional responsibilities as well. And if things go even better than that, I'll be able to pay you. But this is the beginning opening idea here. I want to kind of get some applications in first get, to hear you guys out. Now, the advantages of an internship, and this is not just in this one I'm offering you. Internships in general, if they're on paid, paid, whatever, is that you usually get to work with somebody who's an experienced person in whatever field you're interested in. And so when you're working with somebody like that, they have a lot of field experience. They can basically kind of take you under their wing and really push you in a direction that you want to go where you can develop some real skills. Uh, they also have the ability to give you work, real world work. They can kind of give you real world experience and hands-on experience with the stuff you're interested in. So if you're ever, actually, if you're in college, if you're in high school, and you have an opportunity to jump into an internship, I strongly encourage that you do this. This was one of the things that I kind of got to do. I had the luxury of being working for a family-owned business. So I was able to do an internship at our family company as an IT guy. So the problem was is I didn't really have somebody who was an expert there who could teach me or train me in the ways of the IT arts. So I had to be self-taught in a lot of those areas. Nevertheless, it was a great opportunity to get some real experience in the field working with some equipment and hardware that I never would have had otherwise. This particular one will be using exclusively with, of course, WordPress being one of them. And I, I really need somebody who could help me keep my content up to date at my website. Because if you go to my website right now, PCMTechHelp.com, you will notice it is actually behind quite a bit on the live stream side. But uh, that's mostly because of what's going on here because... We're always in a work in progress here, and I've got a full-time job outside of this. And this is a big community effort. I kind of want to pool the resources together, and we're going to make this thing huge because I want this to be huge. But I can't do it on my own, guys. So that's my shameless plug for today. But make sure you do some types of internships if you have the opportunity, especially if you're young, paid or unpaid, whatever it might be. Take advantage of that experience and be a sponge. Soak up as much experience from those people as you possibly can. All of it. Take it all. Every single opportunity you get, take it. Run for the hills. 
Anyways, if you want to send me an application, send it to Craig at PCMTechHelp.com. That's Craig at PCMTechHelp.com. And like I said, just put in your name, what your background is in tech, a little bit about yourself. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant and why you're interested in the position. And remember, I'm going to need at least five to ten hours a week of your time. And I'm not, I'm not saying... I'm saying you you will have to commit five to ten hours a week of your time. Don't say you're going to commit five to ten hours a week of your time and then not commit five to ten hours a week of your time. So that's going to be kind of the deal going on there. So in the last part of the show today, we are actually going to go into the questions in the chat room because I actually didn't want to cover a real in-depth topic today because I'm going to be going on vacation next week. So I didn't want to get my feet too dirty tonight because I didn't want to go into anything heavy because I wanted to keep it light, and I wanted to spend the last of my time discussing with the community. And uh, one of our community members, Viper, actually submitted a script that he wrote. It was a batch file. For those of you who don't know what batch files are, they're essentially scripting files from Microsoft. And he wrote his own custom crap cleaner batch file. I have it open on my screen here, and I'm going to switch over to it so you guys can take a look at it. And it's quite interesting what he did. I kind of like it. Let's go into our 3D mix here and take a look. What we have here is he's got echo off so that you don't see the text that's displayed. And then we can go in here and actually see everything that he did. He's going through all kinds of wonderful... I don't even know what he's doing. Actually, this is kind of interesting. It's got this really cool coded by, and then it's got this awesome interface where you can actually select your options. You can run it, delete the crap files, delete internet files, kill a process. Now I'm going to tell him to make sure that he posts a link to this at the community page, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. And this is really cool because you can actually look at his code and kind of get an idea of how batching really works in Windows, how flexible you can be. He was able to write an entire program essentially, right from a text editor in Windows, that created, uh, that cleans out your system in essence. It was emulating the CCleaner software. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. CCleaner is essentially a go out and clean up all your junk software package, and it's been around for years. So it's really, really kind of cool to see somebody come up with some clever ways. Here's this delete function here. I can see it right here. One of them. This is deleting internet cookies, and it basically uses your app folder. Good. That's cool. That looks really cool. Uh, deleting internet files. Very nice. It's very clean, very organized, well-documented. Kudos to you, Viper, on that one. Uh, very few programmers document their programs well. And so this is the decrapifier. And I'm wondering if I could... I'm, I'm a little afraid to download it and run it live because I'm kind of afraid that it'll actually kill whatever, <laughs> whatever application's going on right now in my, uh, in my live stream. I don't, I don't want to interfere with the live stream by doing this because... We don't want to damage anything, because that's uh, that's kind of scary. But hey, very cool script, man. Make sure you check that out. Uh, I'm going to actually set up also here, I'm going to set up Skype, because I want to do some, uh, some inner, we're going to try some, we're going to experiment here. Skype. Let me be the first one of you to call me. I, I want to do this, too. I wanted to do this earlier, and I didn't get a chance to. And uh, I wanted to Skype somebody in here. Hopefully, hopefully people will be able to hear the audio. And, uh, and see if we can't get them, get their audio in here, and we can discuss it. Uh, and, and, and looks it for, looks like, when I do it for Viper, script, who has Skype? Anybody who has Skype can call in. And this is going to be actually, it's going to eventually turn into a call-in show where I'd like to actually have some interviews with people and talk to them about it. But if I get a, if I get a call in, my username is Craig Chamberlain, go figure. No, craig.chamberlain.pcm is going to be the Skype address. And uh, what I'm going to plan on doing here in the future is actually making it so people can Skype in at any time and ask questions. And what we'll do is I'll just take the numbers as they come in. It'd be great if I had a call screener, but that's that's not going to happen pretty much ever. But um, Holy Boy asked a question. Where do I send my resume, Craig? Definitely interested. I seriously would value the training and experience. Craig at PCMTechHelp.com. Go ahead and send it in, man. I'm more than happy to read over it. I know you've been part of the community. I'd be more than happy to see if we could get you going on that. Uh, it looks like people are talking about PlayStation 3. Now, I personally haven't used the PlayStation 3 much. Uh, I was kind of a fan of the Xbox before the PlayStation, and the big thing that kind of made me shy away from the PlayStation 3 was mostly the PlayStation Network 
and I was so addicted to Xbox Live. And the Xbox Live personally was always a better experience for me as far as gaming is concerned. And so that was why I actually kind of made sure I made that a big part of my gaming experience. And what sucks is the PlayStation 3 had substantially better graphics. So it's kind of a difficult juggling at, uh, game there. It's, it, it's like you, you want the games to look good, but you also want to be able to hang out with all your buddies and play games. So there's a lot of really cool pros and cons to consoles now. I just can't believe I'm thinking about switching away from physical media. I can, but I wonder how it's going to go. Viper says, I need help. Every time I get an unknown file, the extension won't show up in the description. Like if the extension was .stx, the description won't say .stx file. I remember editing the description. Now, this is weird because the file description is actually, I thought, integrated into the registry. So I'm curious to see why you would lose that from the description. Now, I'm assuming you didn't actually get... I'm assuming you didn't actually get... Uh, actually, accidentally hide your extensions because you can actually show your extensions if you go to your view folder options. So if you open up, uh, let's bring up my desktop here again. Let's go to screen, 2D mix. Let's go to the screen, go up to computer, right click on it or double click on it. I'm sorry. If you go to organize up here at the top and you go to uh, folder and search options, you can go to view and then uh, you got to go to Right here, there's a checkbox for hide extensions for known file types. You have to uncheck that and select apply, and then select OK. Now, what I'm wondering is what you're saying. It, it just depends on, on where you're looking. But if I look at my documents library like I'm showing on my screen right now, and if I go to detail, uh, if I, I'm sorry, if I go up here and I actually show details of my files and scroll down, sometimes you can get a file description over here that will actually tell you what your extent extension is. Let me see if it'll actually give me the option. I have to right click up here at this top bar to actually add ones. And it doesn't look like there, there are more any for description. Maybe I gotta go down through, wow, there are a lot of them. I can go down through here all the way down to description. Let me check that off and click okay. And I can scroll over to description. And my descriptions are all blank. So, <laughs> so apparently you're not the only one with that problem. Sir, it's kind of funny. Kind of wondering what, what, what what's going on there. <laughs> so Viper, I, I can't really tell you. Uh, I'm a little little vague on your description there. So I went to a drug test several years ago and I failed. That's unfortunate, Kevin Cassidy. But welcome to the show. We're happy to have you with us. Very happy to have you with, have you with us. Uh, Compton Sue actually made a very good suggestion for cloud storage. We were talking about this earlier today. You can use software such as TrueCrypt. It's a free software encryption package. And you can basically just create an encrypted folder or an encrypted file right with TrueCrypt. And then you can store that file on the cloud. So for people who are really concerned about security, TrueCrypt will give you basically Pentagon level security on your files and folders, and then you can actually add those folders to your cloud storage, and then you got all your data on the cloud, but then in order to get access to that data, they have to enter a password that's encrypting the data, so people can't actually get to the data. Very excellent suggestion, Compton Sue. I, I should have thought of that one. Usually I, uh, usually I think about encryption. We've talked about that a number of times actually at the community page. So it's a very excellent suggestion. Compton Sue is our big download guy over there at the, uh, the community page. PCM Tech Help Show slash community. Holy Boy says, too late for BlackBerry in my opinion. I completely agree, actually. I'm kind of wondering if they really have lost their edge. Because the big thing between BlackBerry and Microsoft is they're both, they both use that same dated business model where they wait for a product to like be established. And then they're like, hmm, maybe we should get into this market. No, we'll wait another year. See if this is just a fad. And so they'll wait like a year, and then they'll be like, mm, let's try one out. And then they make a really crappy one, put it in the market, and people are like, this sucks. And they're like, well, maybe it's not for us. Maybe it's just not our audience. Our, our, our fans don't like it. And so then they'll wait another year, and they'll be like, okay, wait a minute. We better do something about this. And then they scramble to make a product to finally push it into the market. It's unfortunate. 
It's kind of part of their business model, actually. So let's see what we got here. Viper said, will you show everyone our code? Actually, I showed everybody your code. So it looks like we finally did it, and you did a fantastic job, Viper. Very good addition to the show. So let's go up here. You have my number, says Tom Prokes. I don't. I, I got to use Skype because otherwise people won't hear you. Where do you send my resume? Okay, that was Viper. I'll post a download for you guys. Viper's going to be posting a download in the community page for the uh, the crap cleaner cleaner script, which uh, is very cool. I'm excited about people seeing that. And it looks like we are actually going to lose some frame rate here. Uh, added on Skype. Not very many questions tonight. Here we go. Internet Explorer is twice as fast as Chrome when I run speed test. Any ideas? This is from Kevin Bragdon. Now, when you say speed test, I'm assuming you mean speedtest.net. Um, I need to know exactly what speed test you're running. There really is no reason that a browser should hinder your bandwidth unless there's something running in the background of that browser that may be malicious. Uh, first thing you're going to want to check, Kevin, is whether or not you have Chrome extensions, any Chrome extensions ex installed that might be running in the background chewing up bandwidth. Uh, there's also the, the issue of choosing the, the same server, so you choose apples to apples. He's, he's discussing speedtest.net. Speedtest.net is essentially a bandwidth testing utility. I talked about it in yesterday's episode. And you can go to speedtest.net and test whether or not you're getting sufficient Internet service bandwidth from your internet service provider and so you just go there type in speedtest.net and then you can actually click begin now on the test it'll choose a random server and it'll actually test your bandwidth speeds well if you're not choosing the same server on two different browsers it's not really a fair comparison but really that seems very substantial if you're getting uh, half the speed on a certain browser as another your browser really doesn't determine your internet speed it determines your internet rendering seat speeds so there's basically three factors that come into play when you're actually browsing the internet as far as internet usage and, and performance is concerned. You have your base operating system speed, which affects how fast your browser processes the images, video, information, and all that in your browser. Then you have your browser rendering speed, and your browser rendering speed is a huge contributor to processing the information that it gets back from the remote website and then it displays it to you. And then you have the internet service provider speed or your bandwidth, it's called, and that has a download speed and an upload speed. So it's called your downstream and your upstream. Now if your downstream is essentially too slow, it really doesn't matter how fast your other two are because that's always gonna bottleneck you. So really quick internet's a combination of all three of these factors. Now another thing that can affect performance that's outside of those three factors is whether or not the website you're trying to connect to is down because the external website can also be slow. So that website might be having rendering issues, performance issues, anything like that can also cause internet speed to slow down. But uh, typically if you're gonna be running into a Chrome issue, Internet Explorer issue, you're looking at an extension or malware or something infecting that browser, causing it not to perform properly. And either you got to go in and remove those extensions, run malware by anti malware to make sure you've removed all your malware, also a free tool, or uninstall your browser and reinstall it again. And this has been a particular nuisance with Google Chrome. I've actually ran into it a number of times with Chrome. I've had to go in and actually reinstall the browser because of performance and or functionality issues. And it's been the only way I've been able to fix some problems mostly related to extensions and such. So, let's see what else we got here. Craftkick says, I would Skype, but I'm nervous. Parents might be like, who are you talking to? Yeah, that might bother them. Uh, Craven Bragdon says, used to be able to watch the show on my phone, but cannot now with the move to live stream. And that is disappointing, Kevin. I apologize, I apologize for that. Uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the frustrating things about Google is I have to basically choose to balance between do I go for high quality, HD quality content so I can share my screen and you guys can see what I'm talking about? Or do I opt for the lower resolution content in a broader audience? My YouTube audience is essentially where they all live. And it's really frustrating that I can't really come up with a good way to broadcast to my viewers that I'm broadcasting on live stream. 
and it, it is quite frustrating. But I know that Google will eventually move their Hangouts back to HD or up to HD, and then I will actually be able to do my broadcast again straight through YouTube. Ultimately, that's where I want to do it at, but in the meantime, Livestream.com is my temporary relocation program. It's my relocation program for the HD quality. Because to be honest with you, I, I was getting a lot of issues with people saying, I can't see your screen, I can't, you know, it just, it was just, it didn't look very professional. And it doesn't. People are like, wow, your quality is really bad. I got that all the time. And, and I agreed. It was bad. It was awful. And uh, live stream is substantially better. So we're hoping, we're hoping. You can send Google an official feedback link on uh, the Google Hangouts and, and just tell them, dude, we need, we need something better than 360p. People can't stream live on that successfully. That's, that's like a nightmare. It's unfortunate, but it's a necessary evil. Something I'm dealing with. Um, but you can try downloading the Livestream.com app. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's pull up this Livestream.com app here. And I'm going to see if I can broad check my broadcast live right now on the show. Hang on, that's not right. I went to the wrong thing. Actually, what's funny is I don't even have the Livestream.com app. I'm going to ask the community, has anybody here had any luck using the Livestream.com app? Anybody? Hey, it looks like we're getting a call from Tom Prokes. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully you guys can hear the audio. I don't know if you can or not. Uh-oh. That audio is coming in through the wrong location, Tom. We're going to decline the video. Can I hear you, Tom? Say something. Okay, you're very quiet. No, it's not you. It's not you. It's not you. It's on my side. <laughs> This is the problem I'm going to run into here is because I can't actually hear you through my headset, which is going to cause problems. So we're going to turn you up here on the speaker so people can hear you. Okay. But turn me down on your end if you can. Oh, oh, okay, are you there? Can people hear Tom Prokes? I should be. Ah. You sound good on my end. Hopefully All people right. can hear you. So how's it going, Tom? It's going. That's good. It's going okay. That's good. That's good. Uh, you recently posted a fan film. I guess I could call it a fan film at the community page, which was quite interesting. Um, <laughs> what gets you motivated to do things like this? Just out of curiosity, because it was quite hilarious on my end, because I, I enjoy things like that. I'm kind of a, a oddball when it comes to people making uh, oddball cuts and edits of, of videos. People do it to Chris Perillo's community all the time, and I think they're the, the funniest thing in the world. So, Can, uh, you, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so what, what kind of, uh, how long does that usually take you to put something like that together? Your video? Yeah. Um, probably about an hour worth of cutting and editing. That's cool. What software do you use? I just use the Windows uh, Live Movie Maker. Yeah, I love Windows My Live Movie Maker. I'm actually very it, surprised. It's very nice, actually. It's very easy for anybody to use. Now, do you, a lot of people don't realize this, but the Windows Live Movie Maker, they redid it. This was after XP, and a lot of people had that notorious frustration or old stigma related to the old Windows Live Movie Maker and uh, <laughs> I don't know if you had that same problem or not but uh, I was very reluctant to new use the new one for that reason did you have that same experience no I, I have a smooth experience with it with the old one too uh, or... no I'm more or less into the uh... you gotta remember I've only been using a computer too and Three quarters of a year. Oh, so you never de I've had dealt XP with the... stuff, and you know I've dabbled. I've had XP. Um, my preference is I'm a, I'm a seven guy. That's what made me like computers, besides watching shows, of course. Oh, oh well, of course. But <laughs> but uh, Windows Seven is actually probably I think the triumph of Windows. So I think really you came in at a good time, but unfortunately right. they immediately tried to shut it down with eight, which is kind of a disappointment. But uh, Windows 7 is probably their best experience as far as usability is concerned. Sure. And really, you're walking into it after, what, 20 years of engineering when they finally perfected it, and then they're like, hey, let's change it. Yeah, sure. 
Uh, what's weird about that is um, you said you were work, working with computers for about two and a half years. What's your like favorite thing to do with computers then? I mean, it, it, I come from a generation of like I've been around them forever. So how how do you adapt to such a like a massive information scheme? Um, I mean, where do you start? I'm mechanically minded. Okay. I've been a building engineer for 15 years. Right. I've, I've worked on servo motors. I've worked on buildings from roof to uh, sub pumps. Right. Um, it's all relative knowledge. I have a mechanical mind. I understand physics. Right. Um, and computers just kind of slides right along inside there, you know. So when I when I picked up on it, I, I accelerated really quickly, quickly. And I really didn't like computers until Seven came out. Right. Okay. So it actually you, it was a user interface thing then. Sure. So it was just. Um, yeah, and the more I learned, and then I started watching your videos, and then I just I raced right through it. Once cool. I got the basics down, um, I accelerated it at such a high pace. And then I was watching Eli, the computer guy. Right, and Eli. Chris Perillo. Yeah, Chris Perillo. More, Chris is kind of I don't know. I have my opinion about, him, but um, he's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, information wise, I really haven't really found too much substance for him. But, right. Um, yeah, like Eli, if you got an hour or two or three to sit and. Uh, listening whatever he's a longer uh term guy where your videos are quick to the point right um you can't lose interest you kind of look forward to the next one. Oh well that's good to know that's good to hear i, I don't get much actual verbal feedback i get the, the little blips and and things on and off there but uh that's pretty cool i'm glad that so that's kind of cool that uh, my videos helped you out in that respect but uh it's kind of cool to see somebody you know who kind of came into it just just dove right into it that's that's really what's amazing about the internet its ability to really make you adapt so quickly to yeah but my old school i'm 44 years old uh, right. i grew up with the generation x and we didn't grow up with this technology right i had a tv computer from radio shack we used to write basic language right um that's what we had and for me it was just a turn off because you know but now when something came the internet's not AOL anymore. Right. Um, you know, you got T3 lines, you got uh, this cable high speed bandwidth. And all of a sudden, it's like <laughs> it was marketable to me. Right. I was a buyer now. I'm, I'm sold. Right. That's very cool. It's cool to see how things kind of progress for people. And like I said, it, it's just like our generation. We just we grew up with it, man. It was just yes. part of our everyday life. It still is, and which is actually scary to a point because we just accept it at face value for the most case and we trust it probably more than we should and you know and me and you have talked about that historically related to privacy and security um probably trusted a lot more than anybody ever should uh, even by today that's, even by today's standards that's why i take my stance on um carefulness and i, I come concerned because what if you are so um acclimated to a world that can easily be switched off <laughs> what would you do would you farm I don't know. Be able to take care of yourself independently. Yeah, we don't have an app for that. That's that that's going to be a problem. I, I grew up by gardening, fishing, hunting. Um, <laughs> we did stuff like that. Where now, oh, it's not politically correct to harm animals, cut off PETA, uh, don't kill Bambi. You know, it's just, I mean, you got to eat, you know? I mean, right. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Protesting the uh, McDonald's for uh, slaughtering anal cows. I mean, it's, it's but see, get back on the um, Windows 7 really made me open my eyes to computers, and I, I'm really reluctant to see it come in. I have a copy of it that is legitimate, that came with my PC. Right. But the thing about the company from my... Uh, you're, fade, you're fading out there. Your audio's fading in and out. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's cheap mic. Oh, it's okay. Um, I got the power tech from Micro Center, and right. it came with high-end. I got the highest third-generation uh, dual-core i3, 3.3 gigahertz. It's uh -huh. awesome. Uh -huh. a terabyte hard drive for 450 bucks. Wow. So the thing is, is that Good deal. you can get a quality computer without the name and the blower. Right. Any blower. Well, here's... They did give me the option for Windows 8 Pro. I have the disks. Right. Now, here's the thing about that is they're now talking, and I was listening to Leo Laporte today, There's now they're now talking about the fact that the desktop and the laptop are in the beginning phases of obsolescence because of the power of mobile. And uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to see what the generation after my generation is looking at because 
the power of, say, the Samsung Galaxy S4, which is just now coming out, it has literally inside of it enough hardware to do just about anything you can think of, even interacting with, like you said, you used worked with mechanical work for uh, barometers, any kind of uh, alt altimeters, all kinds of sensors for uh, eye tracking, finger hovering, basically actually being able to engage supposedly with external devices such as uh, health monitoring, which of course is scary in itself. I saw some microchips people were talking about soldering in their arms, which is right. concerning. But uh, well, it's like a bio biometric uh, interface. Right. Right. So they have they have this whole thing now where the technology is becoming so small and so powerful. Like, do you think that the desktop computer will ever obsolete? I mean, in in essence, in that respect. I, I think it will, but I don't want it to. I like I like the foundation. I like to say it's mine. I, I personally feel like if you ever seen the um, the V uh, series that came out a few years ago, they canceled it. Right. Where it, the people on the spaceship are using holograms. I, I actually foresee that happening. Yeah. I think the cloud will be ultimately. That's it. <laughs> Not a whole lot to do after that. You'll have a very easy interface, and everybody computes through one mind. Right. It'll right. Be a collective computer. Right. Well, and it's just it's. it's it's just it's an exciting time, but uh, but also kind of scary. It just depends on the way you. It depends on your perspective and experience usually, but um, little, no. you're fading out I'm really not, big time now. I can't hear you at all. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I have a train by me. Oh, okay. I might withdraw from computers if it goes that route. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't blame you. So one more thing uh, before I let you go. Um, okay. I really appreciate all your content you're contributing to the community. So thanks for coming out for that. Um, sure. So make sure you stick around. And uh, what do you think should be the next direction? Because I'm going to ask this pretty much when people call in. This is going to be one of the big things. What do you think should be the next direction of PCM? What do I think? On the spot. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Can't hear you. We, we share a lot of free information, which is great, because I've learned a lot from that myself. I right. Can't. Right. Okay. I use a lot of the things the guys have brought to the table. Okay. Um, what I think we should do is we need expansion. Right. I remember watching, I posted earlier your um, your dual boot series. Yep. And you were talking, about, like you had talked about before, about having, um, what do you call that, a, a chat, not a chat room, but some type of forum. Right. And obviously that didn't really pan out too well, but this can Right. You're using a new Google Plus. Yep. The new this, the new that is hot. Yeah, the Google Plus community is very exciting. It's a, it's a powerful it's tool. Still, it's a Google Plus itself. It's not. It's new. Yep. It's not like Facebook. It's going the way of, of uh, whatever the other one was. I wasn't around. But, um, yeah, I think Facebook's going away. A lot of young people are losing interest in it. Yep. It's basically, it's basically very shallow where we actually have content. Right. Yeah, content's the our best content. part about Google Plus. It's a content network. That, that's, that's our selling point is our is our content. Right. If you want a place to go to get free software, free stuff, free knowledge, right. we are the place to go. Yep, it's true. It's very true. For those of you paying attention, if you stuck around this long, you obviously want something out of it. <laughs> Check out pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. Hey, I appreciate you Skyping in. I know we ran into some audio issues here, of course. First time doing it. Uh, I'm going to have to do some beta testing behind the scenes because I'd really like to be able to control the levels internally. And I don't think the audio was necessarily on your end. I might have a mixer in here playing some funky games with me. So, okay. thanks for calling in. Hey, you know me. Yeah, well, hey, I'll be at the community. Heard, we'll we'll talk there. <laughs> we'll we'll okay. just call you TP. Tom P. I'll talk to you. Anonymous. Talk to you later. Hey, we had somebody Skype in. Look at that. Thanks for calling in, Tom. It's good to have a nice little fresh face on the show. I like to bring in new people. Um, I did an interview with Big Nate 84 at one point in the past year. It looks like a couple people were talking about it. Craftkick said he might Skype in Craig's next show. I'll probably start setting these Skypes up in like as a uh, probably in advance just so we can kind of get some preface of what we're going to talk about. Because I, I kind of hate, you know, I'll put Tom on the spot because I know him. And because I, I think he acts better under pressure. <laughs> but uh, for most people, they might find that a little awkward and uncomfortable. But uh, really, the show is so open platform that I like to kind of bring people in and kind of see what their thoughts are. And t 
talking and discussing this stuff is really probably the, the most fun I have. And uh, when I had uh, Big Night 84 on here, we did some audio discussion. So that probably won't become one part of the one bigger part of the show. So before we close out tonight, does anybody else have any other questions? Because I'm going on vacation next week. I'm going to be out of town for the entire week. And uh, if you guys want to tune in and still be connected to the show, you got to join the community, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community, and uh, we will discuss anything and everything there. Like he said, it's on Google+, Plus, so there's tons of free content, free downloads, free everything. And really, it's a powerful place to be if you're interested from all the way beginning phases to expert phases of learning computers. Kind of cool to see that a guy like Tom Prokes can just jump right in there on the internet and find all the information he's looking for. That is the world we're living in now for information it's everywhere and anywhere just for you to go out and grab so make sure you pay attention j ray k said he would have called but he's still waiting for his mic so everyone have a wonderful night again this is the pcm tech help show you're watching pcm tech talk live which is a segment of the show make sure you subscribe on youtube pcmtechhelp.com forward slash youtube and there'll be plenty of videos at that channel including behind the scenes and things like that. And I'm actually going to be doing my shorter, faster Vista series, faster 8 series. By the way, guys, I didn't forget about you. It is going to be coming in on YouTube, so make sure you stay tuned in there as well for that. And it'll tell you how to completely optimize your Windows 8 operating system. So thanks for coming out, everybody. I will see you guys uh, probably in a couple weeks in the live show, but I'll probably see you before then as regular content. But I may sneak in some live content over the vacation. It depends on how things are going. So take care, and I'll see you guys when I see you.